Prime Minister, thank you for joining us today on GB News. Five people died this weekend trying to cross the, to the UK. Will your Rwanda bill stop the deaths? Yeah, it's, it's a, another tragic example of what this illegal trade is doing to innocent people. And, you know, my, you know, your heart breaks when you hear these stories about people dying. They're being exploited by criminal gangs, and that's why we've got to resolve this issue. There's lots of reasons why, and we should talk about them, but one of them is that innocent people are being exploited by criminal gangs. That's not right. There's nothing compassionate about it, and, in fact, the compassionate thing to do is to tackle illegal migration, and that's what our Rwanda scheme will do. But that's just one of the reasons why it's important that we resolve this issue because fundamentally illegal migration just isn't fair you know we're a country where we play by the rules we put in our fair share we wait our turn and illegal migration undermines that sense of fairness which i think is fundamental to our national character and and the trust on which our system is built and it's for that reason especially that we really must tackle illegal migration. That's why I made it one of my five priorities and I'm determined to do what it takes to, to fix it. Our views at GB News are very exercised by it, as you might imagine. David is emailed in to say that the plan is political sleight of hand to give an illusion of activity to appease voters. And Andy, another uh, viewer, he says that the Rwanda policy is a complete waste of time. It won't work. It won't deter. City of your own MPs, including his fellow Braveman and your friend Robert Jenrick, also don't think currently drafted it works. Are they right? Well, look, I, to all those questions, I'd say, well, let's look at the track record first, right? I've been Prime Minister for a year, just over, and in that time, we've actually reduced the number of people coming here by over a third. That hasn't happened before. No one else has managed to achieve that. That's because we've done lots of good work to tackle this issue because I care about it and I've, I've put a lot of effort into doing something about it. So that should give people a sense of my seriousness of purpose about tackling illegal migration, the fact that it's down for the first time as a result of all that activities. And, and look, will it, will it work? Yeah, I believe deterrence does work. Uh, and the reason I have confidence in that is because of our Albania programme. After I became Prime Minister, I negotiated a new deal with Albania, which means we can now return and did return thousands and thousands of illegal migrants back to Albania last year. And you know what? The numbers coming from Albania dropped by over 90%. Right? That shows that this deterrence works. If people come here illegally but know that they can't stay and that they will be returned, you know what? They stop coming, especially when they're paying people thousands of pounds to facilitate the crossing. No point in doing that if they're not going to end up staying. So, look, I do believe deterrence works. Our, our programme with Albania shows that it works, and that's why it's important that we get Rwanda up and running. That's the better long-term solution to fixing this problem once and for all. You said last week in Accrington you wanted bright ideas that could improve the bill. Have you seen any yet? Are any of the ideas put down by the right of the party bright ideas? Will you accept them? No, I've always said that I'm happy to have a dialogue with anyone who thinks they might have an idea that will improve the effectiveness of the bill whilst making sure that it's still legally compliant, maintains Rwanda's participation in the scheme. Obviously important. We might have all the ideas you want, but ultimately if that means Rwanda will stop participating in the scheme, that's no good at all because a policy without anyone anywhere to send people to isn't a policy that's going to do anyone any good. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have that dialogue. I'm, no, I'm confident that the bill that we've put forward will work. It's also the toughest piece of migration legislation that anyone's ever seen. It goes further than anyone previously was prepared to go. And if you look at it very practically, it systematically shuts off all the avenues of claim that people have tried to make before. Asylum, blocked. Modern slavery, blocked. Rwanda isn't safe, blocked. The fact that you'll be sent somewhere from Rwanda, blocked. Human rights, spurious human rights claims, they've been disapplied. So if you go through these things systematically, uh, it, all these check challenges have been blocked. And that's why leading Supreme, former Supreme Court judges, leading lawyers have all said that they think the bill will do the job that it needs to do. So on that very point then, would you overrule European judges trying to stop flights taking off, so-called Rule 39 orders? Now, I've been very clear I won't let a foreign court stop us from getting flights off and this deterrent working. Now, there's a clause in the bill that says very specifically that it is for ministers to decide whether to comply what with these Rule 39 uh, uh, rulings uh, as they're called. I would not have put that clause in the bill if I was not prepared to use it. Now, look, I, I don't think Strasbourg will intervene because of the checks and balances in our system. And, of course, there will be individual circumstances that people will want us to consider on the facts. Uh, but if you're asking me, you know, are there circumstances in which I'm prepared to ignore those Rule 39s, then yes, of course there are. 
Why have your party failed to control legal or illegal migration since 2010? Look, all I can tell you is the track record that I've got over the last, uh, over the last period as Prime Minister. The numbers, first of all, are far too high. Right? I'm, not, I'm not in any way going to say anything other than that. The numbers of legal migration in this country are too high. They're putting unsustainable pressure on our public services, on local communities. That's not right. I supported Brexit. Many of your viewers supported Brexit, but partly because they wanted us to control legal migration. Now, I'm determined to make sure that we do that and bring the numbers down. We've announced a series of measures that will tackle it. They will reduce the numbers by hundreds of thousands, tackling student dependence, social care visa, which has been exploited, and raising the amount of money that people need to earn if they're going to migrate here so that we don't undercut British workers. No one has done anything like that before. They will reduce the numbers by around 300,000 and bring it back down to sustainable levels. That's what I want to see. Uh, and as I said, those policies kicked in at the beginning of this year, so people will start to see them working over the course of this year. It is the problem that middle class professional people benefit from cheap labour. I mean, do you personally get the anger felt in some red wall areas, certainly about the numbers coming in? Yeah, I said the numbers are too high. Right? I, get, I, I, it, of course, I, I mean, I voted for Brexit. I supported Brexit, partly because I think it's important that we have control over legal migration. I say that as coming from a family of immigrants, right? This is about having a sustainable level of migration and making sure that we're also investing in jobs for people here at home. It's the flip side of this also, by the way, is why we're investing more in skills and reforming our welfare system, right? If we want more people to be doing jobs here so we're less reliant on foreign labour, we've got to be investing in skills, apprenticeships. That's what this government is doing, unlike the Labour Party that wants to halve the number of apprenticeships. But we're also reforming our welfare system, where there are far too many people who are being classified as not fit to work. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's fair. I want to support those people into work because that's good for them and their families. There's dignity in work. And we need to have a system that is sustainable. And if we do that, as we're doing because we've seen a worrying rise over the past several years in the number of people, as I said, being signed off as sick. Now, we are going to reform that. Lots of people will criticise it, but it's the right thing to do for those people, for the country, but also it will help us be less reliant on foreign labour, which is something that we all want to see. Today's poll in the Telegraph from YouGov is dreadful news for your party. We're by the post here. The tide has gone out. Has it gone out for the Tory party? No, look, there's lots of polls all the time. There'll be hundreds of polls between now and the election, but the only poll that counts is the one that actually happens at the general election. And look, the choice of that election is clear, right? You can stick with our plan that is working or you can go back to square one with Keir Starmer. Right? I, I firmly believe that look, the last year or so hasn't been easy, but we've turned the corner. The country's pointing in the right direction and the progress that we are making is starting to deliver dividends for people. You can see that just last weekend. We cut taxes for everyone in work. That's, that's a tax cut worth £450 for someone earning £35,000. That shows that the progress we've made on the economy, halving inflation, is, is delivering dividends. The plan is working. The alternative is going back to square one with Keir Starmer. He's been leader of the opposition for four years. Not once has he said what he would do differently, and that's because he doesn't have a plan. He just snipes from the sidelines, and we know that they don't have a plan to fund their £28 billion borrowing spree. That just means taxes going up for people. He certainly doesn't have a plan to control our borders and stop the boats. He doesn't have a plan to control welfare. He can't tell you what he's going to say on any of these things. We're drinking a cup of GB News tea here on the coast in, in, in Essex. Do you worry that you're not everyone's cup of tea, you're, that your, your wealth, which is earned, means you can't relate to what ordinary people worry about? You know, I'd say a couple of things about that. You know, I, I never heard that during the pandemic when I was Chancellor. Right? When I stood up and announced a furlough scheme, uh, no one said that then, right? Because I think fundamentally people judge you by the content of your character and your actions, and that's how people will judge me. And look, my family emigrated to this country without very much. You know, my parents worked really hard. For, to provide a better life for me and my brother and sister. I worked really hard for everything that I've got. That's the type of country I believe in. And if people want to use that as a you know, political smear or attack, I actually think it speaks volumes about their lack of ambition for our country than it does about me and my background. I just finally, did you wince when you see your tax bill? Excuse me? Do, do, you, do you wince when you see your tax bill? You talk, well, look, I want taxes to come down for everyone, and that's why I'm pleased that because we've halved inflation last year, because wages are now rising, we've managed to grip spending and borrowing and welfare, we're now able to cut people's taxes. So just the other weekend, a significant tax cut. Everyone in work, £450 on average for someone earning £35,000. I've said I want to cut taxes more when it's responsible to do so. We also had a massive tax cut for businesses that was announced, which 
hundreds of businesses described as the single most transformative thing we could do for growth and investment in our country. And look, that's my plan. That's our plan. We want to control spending and welfare and, and, and so that we can cut taxes. We are now delivering that. As I said, stick with the plan rather than go back to square one with Keir Starmer because that's just going to mean £28 billion of spending that he doesn't know how to pay for and higher taxes for everyone. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us on a freezing cold. Yeah, we're keeping coast. warm with the GB News team. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you.